listener beware, you're in for a scare. It's Wesley Hollis in Under the Magician's Spell. This is Pick a Path Podcast. And I'm your host, Troy J. Malcolm. And I'm here with Wesley Hollis. Hello, Wes. Hello. It is good to be here. Thank you. So, Pick a Path Podcast, we are looking at a Give Yourself Goosebumps book by R.L. Stein. Now, Wes, you're a book enthusiast. I sure am. Self-proclaimed and, I mean, acclaimed by others. Yeah, well, presumably. Yeah, good. Did you ever read the Give Yourself Goosebumps books? Possibly when I was a child, I may have, but not recently. And what about, like, interactive novels as a medium? I'm a big fan of them. I have definitely not read enough of them. I think I own one, Ooh. and I've not read it, like with the majority of books that I own. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what this book has to offer. Well, I'm glad you've joined me. We are going to do a playthrough of this book. That is what we're going to call it. I am going to read you the book. You will make the choices that are at the bottom of the pages, and we'll go on an adventure together. Excellent. And I will say, I'm determined not to die. Okay, well... So if I die within the first two pages, I will be very disappointed. (laughs) Well, hey, you will get two lives, so if you do die, we will let you go back and change a choice that you have made in the novel, and see what your outcome could have been. Excellent. I hope that I don't die on every single of my first few choices. (laughs) So... Under the Magician's Spell, this is the book. I'll let you have a look at the cover. Uh, Let me know what you think. Just, I do love it. It is a magician-themed novel, and I know you do like the idea of magic and magicians and magic tricks. Excellent. Classic. Uh, For the listeners, the cover is one of the classic sawn-in-half type pictures where two halves of a person are in a box. The girl on the front looks amazed to see her own feet. (laughs) Amazed or shocked or horrified? She looks more amazed than shocked or horrified. She looks pretty happy, actually. Oh, you're Um, right. That is a smile. There's also a rabbit in a hat. Another classic magic gag. There you go. Yeah. That's how you know it's about magicians. And also the book says, Boo, dude. Goosebumps is on TV. So see your local TV listings for details. I'd imagine that those are all thoroughly out of date. Well, hey, look, if you check your TV listings and Goosebumps is still there, you're living in a good time. Yeah. The Who 90s. Knows? This, might, this might also be the future where it's been brought back, so you never know. Ah, oh, love that. But with Jack Black always there as R.L. Stein, I'd love this. Mm. Was he R.L. Stein? He was in the most recent Goosebumps movie. Oh, okay. See, yeah. you learn something new every day. I said most recent. Now, there was a sequel, and I don't believe he played R.L. Stein in the sequel, and I haven't seen the sequel, so fake fan. Oh. Yeah. Got me there. So we are going to read through this novel. That book sound. Oh, yeah. I waited. I knew you'd appreciate how the sound of the flickering pages sounded through the microphone. Who wouldn't? Now I am going to read it to you, but feel free to add as we go. Gotcha. You flatten yourself against the wall. You listen hard for a noise. Any noise. Will you be able to make your escape? The only sound you hear is your own raspy breathing. You slowly peer around the corner. All clear. It's now or never, you murmur. It's now or never. You take a deep breath and sprint towards freedom. Bang! door slams behind you as you fling yourself onto the lawn and you cheer. Made it! But you know there's no time to celebrate. You glance around. So far, so good. You race around the side of the house and come to a dead stop. Turn to page two. So your first choice is to uh, go to the next page. Okay. Well, I choose to go to the next page. Ah, excellent. I'm glad you haven't given up here and now. That would be (laughs) very awkward. Yeah, I I choose to die. <laughs> Against my own wishes, <laughs> which I earlier stated to not die. You specifically said you didn't want to die in yeah. this episode, and you immediately just ah, just yeah. Instead of turning to page two, seems like too much effort. I mean, love that for you. Right. So what happens next? <laughs> there they are, standing by your bicycle. Your mother and sweet little Joni. Hi, sweetie. Your mother greets you. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Your stomach sinks to your toes. You were so close. So close to escape. Now you know what's coming. I'm meeting Sid at the mall, you mumble to your mum. That sounds like fun, dear. I'm sure Joni would like to go too. Ma, you wail. Joni is such a pain. She gets into everything. 
I have to watch it every second. Joni will behave, won't you, cutie? Your mother turns to Joni and kisses her cheek. Joni nods sweetly. She gives you a big, fake smile. Goodbye fun, you think. Your bratty nine-year-old sister always gets you into trouble. She has to touch everything she sees. Break it or take it, seems to be Joni's motto. But she's so disgustingly cute, no one ever seems to get mad at her. Grown-ups love her brown curls and bright blue eyes. Look, Joni wants to hold your hand, your mother gushes. Isn't that cute? Ugh, sounds awful. Well, I mean, it's a horror book. It's supposed to be spooky. That's the most horrifying thing that's happened thus far. Well, let's hope it gets scarier. It might not. Yeah. Uh, It does say that your option is before you puke. Turn to page three. Okay. Um, I puke and then I turn to page three. Oh, going against the book. Yeah. Mm, They won't like that. like that. You shake off Joni's hand. Once your mother is out of sight, you know Joni will drop her cutie pie routine. Listen up, Joni, you tell her. I'm in charge, so hurry up and grab your bike. I'm already late. I have to get my diary first, Joni says. That stupid diary. Joni never goes anywhere without it. You two have fun, your mother tells you. Then she follows Joni into the house. Joni, you holler. I'm leaving. Now! You jump on your bike and pedal as fast as you can. Hopefully none of your friends will spot you riding to the mall with your little sister. You glance back and see that Joni is pedaling hard to keep up with you. When you reach the mall, you and Joni lock your bikes in the rack. Don't wander off, you instruct Joni. Who? Me? She asks super sweetly. Kids these days. Kids those days. Kids, these days yeah. and in future days. Kids those days back in the 90s. <laughs> so, how do you feel about Joni at the moment? I mean, the way I feel about those children, I guess. Not super confident. <laughs> she's probably up to something. Uh, maybe she's the magician. She probably is. Unfortunately, your option is to hurry to page 18. Okay. Uh, so we're going to well, do that. I hurry along. There we go. 18. You roll your eyes at Joni's sickly sweet act. You rush through the mall to meet your friend Sid. You spot him pacing in front of the Comet Connection. Sid is wearing a blue jacket that is a little too small for his chubby frame. He runs a hand through his spiky blonde hair. Where were you? He demands as you hurry over to him. My mum made me bring Joni, you explain. Really? Sid raises an eyebrow. Then where is the little princess? Oh no. Did you lose Joni already? I mean, sounds like typical me. (laughs) You just accidentally lost someone? Accidentally lost a child. It happens, I guess. Accidentally on purpose. Now it just says to turn to page 7, so we're going to do that. I'm surprised it hasn't given you a choice quite yet. It's taking its sweet time. It's really building up the story. Joni has already disappeared. Too bad you can't let her stay lost. You glance around the mall. There she is, you say, pointing across the courtyard. Joni stands frozen in front of a shop window, as if she were in a trance. For a moment, you could swear her feet are floating inches off the floor. Can't be, you tell yourself. You blink and look again. No, her feet are still on the ground. The magic shop, you read the store's sign aloud. She's going in, Sid warns. Come on, you cry. We've got to get her out of there. That store won't know what hit it. You and Sid follow Joni into the magic shop. It takes a few seconds for your eyes to adjust to the dim light. She gives a little gasp beside you. Wow. You murmur. The shop is filled from floor to ceiling with magic tricks. Of course, Joni is touching every single one. You shake your head as you watch her fiddling with a miniature guillotine. But then she sticks her finger into place under the tiny blade. Joni, don't, you shout. Before you can stop her, she pulls the string. The blade drops right through her finger. (sighs) The suspense. Oh, honestly. Although, fun fact, you can genuinely buy miniature guillotines that you can use to chop carrots. Can you? You can. They are a thing. I'd imagine that they would also chop your finger off if you (laughs) were not careful. I'm kind of hoping that's what's going to happen to Joni, but also... I kind of want to go to the magic shop with floor-to-ceiling magic tricks. I definitely... I wish that we had a magic shop around. I think that they used to be a thing, and they have died out, which yeah. is... Unfortunate. Extremely. Terribly sad. It's like shops that sell crystals. They're all gone. Mm. 
Now it says to rush over to page 114. I'm surprised that they haven't just... Because we've not had a choice yet. I'm surprised they haven't just gone linear for the first few pages. Yeah. And they've made us jump around. I guess they're getting you used to the aspect of the pages just turning randomly to a different section of the book. Hmm. Clever. <laughs> Smart book. Ah, spooky. Joni, don't move! You race to her side. Your mum will be furious if you allow Joni to chop off her finger. You force yourself to look down at your sister's hand. You hope you'll be able to stand the sight of all that blood. Joni slowly pulls her hand from the guillotine. She grins up at you, waving all five fingers. Do you strangle Joni now? Or do you use every ounce of strength and try to ignore your little sister's tricks? Okay. It's now. happened, Wes. You've been offered a choice. <laughs> I've been offered the choice to strangle a child. Um, or to use restraint. <laughs> Ah, yes, the I R mean, word. Generally, I would use restraint, of course. And so, because this is a book, I kind of want to see what happens if I strangle the child. Escapism. Yeah. Let's, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see if this is a terrible choice that kills me immediately. Well, if we're strangling Joni, we're heading over to page 25. Oop, too far. Come on, you know better than that. Do if I? you touch a hair on Joni's head, you'll be grounded for life and you won't be able to finish the rest of the adventure. So take a deep breath, count to ten, and be nice to your little sister. Go on, you can do it. This book feels patronizing all of a sudden. Oh, I'm going to have to ask you to count to ten, okay. calmly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was extremely calm, and I think we can move on. I want you to go back to page six, which was where having restraint would have led you. Okay, well, I suppose I've got restraint in the end. Joni, you spit out through clenched teeth. We've only just arrived, and already you've... You're interrupted by a poke in the back. You whirl around. There's Sid with a goofy smile on his face. Oops! I don't know what voice I've given Sid, but I apologize for it. Sid says sheepishly. He holds up his hands, they're handcuffed together. Sid, you scold him. You're as bad as Joni. A booming voice makes you jump. I see that you are enjoying my magic tricks. <laughs> Great, you think. The store owner. You okay there? <laughs> All I can think is, this feels like something that I would do at work. Where, <laughs> you know, have to go up to the customer, you have to ask them what they're doing, are you alright? Can I help you find anything there? How can I possibly pressure you into buying something today? <laughs> ah, retail. <laughs> Go on. Great, you think, the store owner. Now we'll have to pay for the tricks we've touched. But where is the guy? You glance around the shop. You don't see anyone. You smell something, though. Something musty and rotten. Welcome to the magic shop, the voice says. A tall, thin man with a skinny moustache steps out of the shadows. He's dressed all in black. His black cape swirls around him as if there were a strong wind blowing. Except, you remind yourself, we're indoors. I am the magician, the tall man declares. I love that voice you've given him. It's beautiful. Th thank you. I've been working really hard since the last episode on perfecting my magician voice. Beautiful. Now, your only option is to turn to page 125. Uh, let's go to uh, page 125. Ha <laughs> got him. Now, there are over 20 endings in this novel. You could hit any of those endings. I'm hoping it ends with you and the magician together. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna body and clad it up. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Team up to get rid of Joni and Sid. Yeah, no, we'll take Joni along with us, but she'll be in the trunk in several pieces. Oh, I love that. Sid will probably join her. We'll see, we'll see. And then we'll die in a dramatic shootout, and, uh, but of course it'll be like the magic bullet catch that Penn and Teller do, where no one actually gets hurt. Oh, I mean, you turned it back into magic. That's yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. Oh, miracle. Great shot, Mr. Magician, you say. You use your word, most polite voice. Maybe that way he won't be angry about Sid and Joni playing with the tricks. Yeah, cool stuff, Sid pipes up. He reaches out to shake the magician's hand. 
What a jerk. He must have forgotten he was handcuffed. The magician peers down at Sid's wrist. You hear a low rumble that gradually turns into a creepy laugh. <laughs> Sid's sorry about trying the handcuffs. You elbow Sid so that he'll put on his most sorry face. He does. But we really have to go home, you continue. So if you could get the key. Key? The magician brings his face directly in front of yours. You notice little wisps of smoke escaping from his collar. This is getting too weird. You glance around for Joni. Adults usually go for a cute act. Maybe she can cute the magician into getting the key. You feel Sid tugging on your sleeve. You turn back around, but the magician has vanished. Where did he go? Is it an option as to where he goes? Oh, definitely not. It, your option I, is to turn to page 8. I think he turned into a bat, and he a flew bat. into the air vents, and then accidentally got sucked into a fan, and... <laughs> That's the last we'll be seeing of him. Absolutely. Hey, you exclaim. Where did he go? Sid points towards a black curtain at the rear of the shop. You walk up to the curtain and give it a yank. There's nothing behind it but a solid brick wall. Weird. It's time to leave, you tell Sid. He agrees. You quickly find Joni kneeling in front of a huge bookcase. Come on, Joni, we're going, you tell her. Suddenly I like Joni. But I'm... Now, you command, taking her to her feet. We need to remove Sid's handcuffs, you say, once you're outside. We have some tools back at our clubhouse. Maybe this will help, Joni says. She holds up an old book. The words, Magic Book of Spells, are written across the gold cover. Joni, you screech. What are you doing with that? I tried to tell you, Joni whines, but you dragged me out of the store. I mean, shoplifting, but we'll, we'll gloss over that. Besides, I think there's a spell in there for getting out of handcuffs. Well, someone needs to do something, Sid grumbles. I think these cuffs are getting tighter. What should you do? If you decide to try a spell from the book, turn to one page, or if you decide to go back to the clubhouse and use regular tools, turn to the other. I mean, I'm sure you can guess, but I'm definitely going to try a spell. Oh, I love that for you. Why would we not? We're in a magic book. Wesley Hollis, the magic book. <laughs> you are the magic book. I am the magic book. I embody it. Which is why I have decided to try a spell for it myself. Okay, let's see if we can find a spell that will do the trick, you say. You're willing to try anything. You grab the small, gold-covered book from Joni and skim the pages. It must be written in some kind of code, you say. I've never seen words like this before. I bet I can read it, Joni brags, grabbing the book back from you. Let me have it. Fine, smarty pants, you say. Go ahead. Joni studies the book, turning the pages slowly. It must be a foreign language, she says finally. I don't know how jo old Joni is meant to be. I think they said nine. Ah, good. Okay. She seems like she's younger than nine, though. <laughs> That's why I went for a younger voice, and then she's saying things like it must be a foreign language, so I was just surprised. Yeah, I mean, kids younger than nine don't know what a foreign language is. Exactly, they only know language. Yeah, all they know is that there is one language, and it's right. probably English because yeah. this book's from America. That's right. Yeah, like Transylvanian, Sid jokes. Maybe the English translation is in the back of the book. Joni flips to the back pages. I think you're right, she says. This looks like English. You peer at the book over her shoulder. Oh, right, you say sarcastically. You snatch the book back from her. If this is English, then what does Iben dos yagat nobis tagu mean? Unfortunately, you're about to find out. Ooh. Your option is to turn to page 40. Okay, I, I choose page 40 then. Ah, oh, thank you. Dramatic. That, that makes it a lot easier for me to do when it, you give me the answer that I'm needing. <laughs> I mean, what if I'd said page 50? Ooh. Oh, whoa. Oh. I mean, I could read you 50. You might oh. not like what it says. No, oh, that's true. I might die on page 50. Let's, let's try 40. <laughs> Loud claps of thunder echo around the wall. The sky grows darker and darker. Huge cracks appear in the floor. You watch in horror as a huge split in the tile moves towards you. Uh -oh. Faster, faster. Look out, you shout. 
you shove the magic book into the waistband of your pants. You try to outrun the widening gap, but it's no use. You fall into the opening. Are you sh- Are you kidding? Your hands reach up for the edge, but the ground is shaking so much that you can't get a good hold. You slide down deeper and deeper into the black hole. Your fingers scrape at the dirt along the sides. You try to find something to hold onto, but there's nothing. The dirt crumbles away under your fingertips. Help! You shout, but there is no one coming to help you. You plunge into the earth's darkness, tumbling over and over and over. And then a magic eagle swoops down and saves me, because I cannot have died already. It says to turn to page 60, so I'm going to turn to page 60 and we'll find out, I guess. Wake up! Someone is shouting in your ear. You open your eyes. Sid is standing over you. What happened? You ask. Where are we? I don't know, Sid answers. Underground somewhere. You rise unsteadily to your feet. You notice Joni sitting on the floor. She looks as if she just woke up. You glance around. The walls of the room are painted black. A wooden coffin sits on a low table. Behind it is a black velvet curtain. Do you think there's another brick wall behind there? Like there was at the magic shop? You joke. Only one way to find out, Sid says. You walk up to the curtain, unsure of what may happen next. Before you can part the thick fabric, three men dressed in red tights somersault into the room. They reach the centre of the room and begin to juggle. Balls fly through the air faster and faster. Then, to your amazement, the balls turn into balls of fire. One of the jugglers turns your way and throws a glowing fireball right at you. Oh no. Do you know how to juggle? Oh, uh... Yes, but only three balls. Well, this says if you can juggle, or if you can't juggle. So you're going to say yes, but only three balls? Yeah, I, I don't know how to juggle more than that. I mean, if you can juggle three balls, I'm actually impressed. Good yeah. on you. Well, in that case, we're going to be turning to page 17. Uh, I like how this book went, Ah, oh, you're falling down a hole. But also, jugglers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the logical next step (laughs) you know if i was to plan out a magician themed book falling down a large black hole that opened up in the ground when you read a random spell yeah jugglers hmm interesting choice yeah pendulet would be proud (laughs) look out you shout the balls of fire speed towards you you put your hands in front of your face you catch a fireball and toss it back before you can take a breath, the jugglers throw another fireball at you. Once again, you manage to toss it back. Why aren't my hands burning up, you wonder. You notice Sid and Joni gazing at you in awe. The jugglers surround you. Somehow you manage to return every ball they throw. As you toss the flaming ball in the air, the jugglers speak in airy flat tones. Way, says one juggler. No, says the second. Who you are, says the third. What do you mean, youch? It's hard to talk and juggle at the same time. You drop the fiery ball and poof! All the other balls vanish. You took the magician's book, the first juggler says. The magician wants it back, says the second. Then he'll eat you for dinner. I mean, there's easier the ways of getting the book back than tossing us down a void and juggling at us, <laughs> surely. I mean, you've worked for a library. Surely when people don't return their books on time, that is your first step. I mean, no comment. <laughs> Wesley Hollis does not accept responsibility for any jugglers who have to go out and collect your late book, yeah, please. And I definitely don't have a pit full of uh, library thieves. A pit? pit full of library thieves. Well, we're going to turn to page 64 and find out what's going to happen in terms of the jugglers and the magic book. I want tenderhooks. Before we end up in the dinner menu, Sid interrupts the jugglers. Can you take off these cuffs? The first juggler somersaults over to Sid. He jiggles with the cuffs. They clatter to the floor. How did you do that? You ask. When you and Sid tried to unlock the handcuffs, it seemed impossible. It's a trick, the juggler answers. Everything is a trick here. Suddenly all three jugglers freeze. The magician! They cry together. He's coming! All three jugglers disappear in a puff of smoke. Huh. I'm going to miss the jugglers. <laughs> I mean, highlight of the book so far. <laughs> What's next? 
We're going to be turning to page 34. Whoosh. 34? That's the page I've always wanted to visit. The magician will be here any minute. Those jugglers made it sound like we're goners, Sid whispers to you. Even if we give him back his book, Joni adds glumly. I didn't do whisper or glumly, but I don't think it matters. You've got to act fast, but you can't escape because you don't know where you are. Besides, there doesn't seem to be a normal door in this black room. Your only hope is to hide the book. Then the magician will need you alive if he wants the book back. We've got to hide the book, you tell Sid and Joni. I'm going to put it in the coffin. No, Sid says. It will be too easy to find. Let's look around. You search the room for a hiding place. There isn't much choice. A wide shelf runs along one wall. On it sits a large fishbowl with three exotic fish. And an old-fashioned metal birdcage with a yellow canary. Huh. If you still think the coffin is the best place to hide the book, choose this option. If you hide the book in the fishbowl, choose this option. If you would like to put the book in the birdcage, choose this option. I mean, I feel like because you can see through the bars of a birdcage, and you can also definitely see through a fishbowl, those are going to be way easier places to find a book. But I also feel like this is a trick question, and if you put it in the coffin, he's going to find it straight away. Um, this is one where you're actually going to have to take a gamble. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, What's your experience with hiding things in coffins, fishbowls, and canary cages? Um, I don't know. I don't feel like I've got any experience in hiding anything in any of those places. Um, however, I'm a fan of canaries. Oh, good. Um, so I'll pick the canary cage just because I'm a fan of canaries. I mean, love that as a reasoning technique. Not so much of a fan of coffins. <laughs> Fish? Fuck them. Fish? Yeah, no. Although I am. I am. I'm a bigger fan of fish than you are of canaries than every experience I've had with you, Wes. Hey, I I grew up with canaries. Full of surprises. Yeah. We're heading to page 132. See if the surprises continue. Grew up with canaries makes it sound like I was adopted by by canaries as a young child and was taught to be a bird. Only fed by his mother mouth to mouth. Yeah. And only seeds. <laughs> the birdcage, you decide. Good idea! I don't remember if Sid's voice is the magician's voice, it seems to be. <laughs> Sid grabs the book and races across the room. He sticks his finger into the birdcage. Don't be scared, little bird. He croons. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely be shit scared by now if I was that bird. If I was that bird, I'd be worried too. Oh, I'm going to open your cage and put something inside. Hurry it up, you urge. The magician could be here any minute. And don't forget to put the book under the paper lining in the cage. Oh, I, somehow I bet that the bird is the magician. We don't want bird doo-doo all over the book. Stupid. Of course I was going to cover the book, Sid snaps. You don't have to call me stupid. I didn't, you declare. But if you didn't, who did? You idiot. Okay, you cry. Which one of you called me an idiot? Dummies. It's the bird talking, Sid Sid exclaims. You and Joni rush over to the birdcage. Say something else, birdie, Joni coaxes. Sid opens the cage and slips his hand inside. That's when you hear a new voice. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Into page 19. Gonna get murdered by a canary now. Sid, Joni, you whisper. If none of us said that, and the bird didn't say that, who said that? The magician? Joni squeaks. The three of you turn slowly and scan the room. A man steps out of the shadows. It's not the magician, but you don't feel any better. This is the biggest, grossest looking guy you've ever seen. His massive body towers over you. Your eyes travel up, up, up to the man's face. His skin is the colour your face turns when you're about to be sick drill runs out of the corner of his mouth. You can smell his foul breath from across the room. He is one creepy dude, and he doesn't look happy. We're in big trouble, you think. 
the giant's voice booms. Give me my birdie. I mean, my first thought was that it's Luther from my Brad or Academy. But if his, <laughs> na- if his face is the colour that you turn when you're about to go sick. Your option is to turn to page 65, so that is where I've turned. The giant reaches out for the bird in Sid's hand. The guy's hand is as big as Sid's head. Is my little birdie okay? The giant makes kissing sounds at the bird. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> oh no. I'm a vanilla guest, he explains. Not a kinky one? I was practicing throwing my voice. You mean a ventriloquist? Joni corrects the man. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> Good on you, Joni. Good move, Joni, you think. Get the giant mad. The huge man peers down at Joni. Uh Uh-oh, you think. Here it comes. You're cute. The giant tells Joni. I know, she replies. They smile at each other. You don't believe it. Joni's cute act is working on this gross guy. Can you show us how to get out of here? Joni asks, flashing her dimples. Come with me, the giant says, taking Joni's hand. Joni, wait, you call. You're not sure you can trust this guy. Do you want to just sit here and wait for the magician? Joni asks you. She's got a point, Sid adds. What do you think? Should you go with the ugly giant? Or do you think it would be better to wait? I mean, now it's a choice between getting eaten by an ugly giant or getting eaten by a magician, who we have heard by now is a cannibal. Although, we don't know if this ugly giant is a cannibal. That's true. So let's take our chances and go with the ugly giant. Okay, well the ugly giant is taking us to page 110. Oh yeah. Okay, you tell the others. Let's get out of here. The giant opens a trap door in the floor. He pulls Joni through it. Sid follows closely behind. You peer into the dark hole in the floor. A damp smell makes your nose crinkle. You see a crooked steps leading down. You hope this wasn't a mistake. You climb down the steps. You find yourself in a dark tunnel. Mold and cobwebs cling to the rough walls. The others are far ahead of you. You have to follow the sounds of their voices. You finally come to an open doorway. You glance inside. You are met with a weird sight. Sid is sitting on the giant's knee. There's another kid sitting on the giant's other knee. The ugliest kid you've ever seen. But you don't see Joni anywhere. What's going on? I mean, has Joni transformed into an ugly kid, or...? <laughs> that would be funny. Just between pages, like, by the way, Joni's ugly now. Yeah, I mean, the cute act stopped working. <laughs> Underground, nobody can see your cuteness. <laughs> Says to turn to page five, when you rush into the room. Where's my sister, you demand, racing into the room. The giant smiles his creepy smile at you. You're just in time for the show. Oh no, he this says. is where I get murdered, isn't it? That's when you notice the kid next to Sid isn't a real kid. It's a ventriloquist's dummy. A really ugly dummy. Where's Joni, you ask again. Of course, knowing Joni, she would have wandered off by herself. The dummy's red eyes blink open. I Freaky Freddy. The dummy says, children don't like me. They think I'm too scary to look at. Sid, come on, you say. We have to find Joni. But Sid just stares blankly ahead. It's as if he were made out of wood. Uh Uh-oh. I need cuter dummies for my act, the giant explains. Then people will like me. No, you think. It can't be. You notice a large cabinet. You rush toward it and yank it open. Joni, you shriek. She gazes at you silently. She's a dummy. And crumpled beside her is another dummy. You pick it up and gasp in horror. The dummy has your face. I mean, when you're a terrifying giant, obviously the problem is your dummies are not cute enough. You now know how this will. End. Yep. They're gonna murder me. Yeah, it happened. They're gonna murder my sister. They're going to murder 
whoever the heck Sid is. I, I mean, mean Jodie like... and Sid were both already dead. They yeah. were already turned oh. into dummies, and now you're being turned into a dummy. <sighs> well, that is how it ended. It's not the worst way to die. <laughs> you're right. You could have been eaten by a magician, could have a been canary, a the giant. He didn't eat you. Should have picked the fishbowl. Well, I mean, because you did die, Wes, this is actually the opportunity you have to go back and choose which one of those options you would like to okay. rectify. Well, let's pick the fish bowl because I'm also a big fan of fish. Okay, so we're going to go back in time, pretend like you were never turned into a ventriloquist dummy, and see what happens had you chosen to hide the book in the fish bowl. Yeah, I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Exactly. It takes us back to page 22. Maybe the fishbowl would be a good place to hide the magic book, you say. You walk over to the shelf and peer at the fishbowl. The fish stare back. No way, Joni says. It will be totally obvious. And the fish might get mad, Sid adds. Yeah, that's important. Don't want to make those fish mad. I don't think that's going to happen, you tell them. You've just noticed the fish aren't real. They're just painted on the inside of the clear bowl. You reach into it. And do a double take. You can't believe what you see. Your hand becomes invisible inside the fishbowl. It disappears completely. Perfect. You test it again. You pull your hand out of the bowl, shake off the water, and then stick it back in. It disappears again. This is so cool. Hey, Joni, you shout. Check this out. Joni glances your way. You watch her eyes travel down your arm to the fishbowl. Her mouth drops when she notices that your hand appears to be gone. Then you lift your arm out of the water. Joni's eyes grow wide with terror. You glance down at the end of your arm where your hand should be. My hand, you gasp. Where's my hand? And then you turn to page 106. <gasps> and I'll find my hand there. I mean, losing a hand is nowhere near as traumatic as literally becoming a dummy, right? Uh, depends on who you ask, I suppose. A look of horror comes over Joni's face as she stares at where your hand should be. Her eyes well up with tears. Here it is, you exclaim. You poke your hand out of your sweater. Gotcha. You double over laughing. You have a really sick sense of humour, Joni mutters. She sticks out her tongue and stomps away. This is the perfect time to be making jokes when we're in a creepy underground lair. Well, yeah, your sister's annoying. Yeah. This is obviously the priority. Oh, honestly, you've got to show a teacher a lesson. Hey, now we know the book won't be seen and if we put it in the fishbowl, you tell Sid. Either the fishbowl or the water makes things invisible. We'd better put the book in something to keep it from getting wet, though. But what? Sid reaches into his... Why do we even care? It's not our book. Yeah, it's... but you'll want to use it to get... Oh, Sid's out of his handcuffs, isn't he? The jugglers let him out. Yeah. Oh, um, well. oh, I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> Sorry, mate. But let's see what happens. Sid reaches into his pants pocket and pulls out a plastic bag. It has half of a peanut butter sandwich in it. He removes the sandwich and stuffs the whole thing into his mouth. Here you go. He mumbles with his mouth full. You take the baggie from Sid and slip the book inside it. Then you drop the baggie into the fishbowl. Joni comes up beside you. She picks up a short black stick sitting on the shelf and taps it on the fishbowl. What do you think this is? She asks. How should I know? You snap. Maybe it's the magician's magic wand. Quit playing with it. Joni sticks the wand into the bowl and stirs. Oh no. Maybe she shouldn't have done that. Ooh. And then it says to turn to page 100. What happens? Let's see. Joni pulls the magic wand out of the fishbowl. You wait for something terrible to happen. Nothing. It's neat the way the wand disappears when I stick it in the fishbowl, Joni declares. She stirs the water again. I can feel the magic book when I stir, but I can't see it, she adds, pulling the wet wand out of the water. She puts the wand into the bowl a third time. She stirs so hard water splashes over the rim. Joni, we have to... You never get a chance to finish what you were going to say. You hear a bubbling sound coming from the fishbowl. Then gurgling... Then, whoosh, water gushes out of the fishbowl. 
You glance at Sid. He stares at the rushing water. Joni shrieks and drops the wand. Water pours onto the floor, rising quickly. The painted fish come to life and start swimming in the knee-deep water. Now you recognise what kind of fish they are. Man-eating piranha. Piranha aren't choosy. They don't mind being kid-eating piranha. This is definitely... The end. Are you kidding me? Ah. Uh, so, the logical option all along was to stick the book in the coffin. Hey. I mean, we don't know. We could have stuck the book in the coffin, and then all of a sudden the book switches places with us, and we're trapped in the coffin, <laughs> and then the coffin lid slams closed, and then we suffocate. I mean, that is a very realistic potential within an R.L. Stein novel. But we've done it. You've played through Give Yourself Goosebumps, book number seven, Under the Magician's Spell. And I was so close to getting goosebumps. I swear, inches away. Inches away from being the spookiest lad to have ever been spooked. Yeah, and it was a lot of fun getting to pretend for one moment that magic was real. Well, I'm glad you could sit down and join me for this, Wes. I had a lot of fun just reading a book with you and having you choose some options. Absolutely, I would do it any time. And next time, I swear, I will not die. I mean, I had high hopes for you. As soon as you told me you would not die, I believed you. Hopes as high as that water was. Oh, right before... The man-eating... Well, I was going to say right before piranha. it drowned me, but we got eaten by piranhas. Well, hey, it's not the worst way to go. You could be a dummy instead. I think I would have preferred that. Oh, At well, least that's go. how I died the first time. So, if you want to... Murder wears in the right way. He would prefer to be turned into a dummy rather than be eaten by piranhas. If you enjoyed this podcast, make sure you give it a subscribe and check out the other episodes we have. We're going to be playing through the rest of the Give Yourself Goosebumps novels with a bunch of guests. Yeah, if you like people being turned into dummies or murdered by piranhas, why not check out some of the many other ways people can die? Ah, oh, there's just so many ways. Where's is there anywhere that people could check you out or like... <laughs> interact with you uh, in real life on the street um, I do not really do social media unfortunately there so you go. this this podcast this episode is really the best way to find me well there you go if you want to see more of Wes make sure you comment or let us know that you would like to see Wesley come back and be in more episodes of the podcast otherwise this has been Troy J Malcolm and this has been Pick a Path Podcast spooky Thanks for listening to Pick a Path Podcast. We release a new episode in the first week of every month. Next episode will be Molly Mason in The Curse of the Creeping Coffin. Subscribe everywhere that podcasts are available and to the Split Television Productions YouTube channel. Cheers! <laughs>